Um, Miro and Eddie Kingston did a promo, a promo package, uh, with their highlights and et cetera. It was good and brief. Um, they're the least of our problems at this point. They're doing just fine. But then you know what it was time for, don't you, Brian? I thought that was a rhetorical question. I don't remember what was next on the schedule, though. Like Mussolini! Oh, God, stop it. And Kennedy! It's a cult of personality! You know, one day CM Punk's gonna listen, and he's gonna say, You know, Tony, I don't want to use that song anymore. This fucking guy has ruined it for me. (laughs) Like Joseph Stalin! (laughs) And... Seth Rollins. Can you license AFI and get me away from this song and cornet, um, please? <laughs> no, I'm telling you. And by the way, Joseph Stalin, come to find out he had the big bushy mustache, but not a beard. So we we mentioned a beard last week. We didn't. He doesn't have a beard. Oh, forgive me. Stalin. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, anyway, then business picks up. No pun intended. Punk comes out. He gets into it. He's got energy. He's a great communicator. He got all the bases covered. He gave a rah-rah for the show. He fired the people up. He name-dropped some of the talent there at AEW. He's having a big party. He said hello to Linda Pillman. He mentioned Ruby Soho, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson. The people are going berserk. And he then asked the fans about, well, who do you think? Who would you like to see me face next? And... (laughs) Did Taz jump his cue? I don't know if he jumped his cue. I think there were some issues over the whole show in terms of the mic going live to the room. I think that may have been the issue. Okay. Well, but the only thing, and it was great because Pug picked right up on it. Taz stood up and gets on the PA and says, take our our names out of your mouth. He had never said their names. (laughs) But I thought that was the joke. I thought actually that was... I thought about. it was a save because I thought Punk was saying, what the fuck? I've never talked. To, I've never said anything about you people. And that's when Taz, Taz said, well, you did on interviews all week. And so I thought they realized that maybe he had stood up too quick and they're trying to save. Oh, no, it. I think that was that was one of the things that made the segment great was the idea. Taz was saying, you better not do that. He's like, I didn't even come I close didn't to do doing that. Yeah, he's like legitimate. <laughs> I didn't come close to even doing that. And their timing on that part was, pr- it was perfect because it felt real. Yeah. It didn't feel scripted. It was great. Well, there you go. See, I fell for it. Uh, <laughs> one way or the other, it, the point is there, the, don't ever mention Team Taz again. And, and he's like, I didn't. What's your fucking price? He said, out of respect, I will listen to you instead of, you know, whatever he said, instead of shoving your head up your ass or whatever. But they had the people. Hobbs and Hook come out to the desk and, you know, as though there's, uh, there's tension. And then Punk said, well, send Starks. And I'm like, yes, or Hook or Hobbs. I'm like, Ooh, beat me if you can survive if I let you. He does Taz his own closing line back to him and music hits. The heels don't advance. I didn't know whether they should have made the match. Uh, or if that's a good enough way to get out of it, but at least they've got Punk interacting with, as we mentioned a couple weeks ago when they did the thing with 2.0 and whatever. Yes, you need to heal fodder, but they have to be in some way respectable, believable, credible. You can't just drag them in off the street. So, but it was a good promo, good interplay. And then... Punks keep it even when Hobbs is going to the ring because he's the next match and they've got to pass somewhat by each other. And they had one of those completely ineffectual referees standing there like a white guy waiting for a bus, supposedly (laughs) keeping them apart. (laughs) But, but still punk wouldn't take his eyes off of him and there was the looks and everything. So there's some tension there. So that was a, again, simple, Simple, easy, effective. Everybody understands it. Even even if the person, one of the people in the promo may have jumped a gun a little bit. Everybody understood what was going on. And I'm not convinced he jumped the gun. I just think it wasn't, the mic may not have been on for the house yet, but I think that was part of it. But this segment was great. First of all, let me just say about Taz. It was a breath of fresh air to have him on commentary. Him being there, and because it's a different role than Excalibur's role, taking whatever you think about Excalibur out of it. The role, it brought out the best of Jim Ross, I thought. Shivani, Shivani, at this point, he's just repeating what he's told to say, and 
you know, telling everyone how happy he is to be alive. Yes, and isn't this great? But Taz has been just, he's been an MVP in every segment he's a part of. He's great on commentary. And him getting involved with Punk here made me very happy. Punk yeah. is so over right now that he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to say anything. You really look at what he's saying in front of these fans. He's not really saying much, and he doesn't have to. Right now, he just has to go out there. They're reacting, and then you went right into this thing. I love them going back and forth. Right there, you have two of the best promos in the company and the entire business, quite frankly, if you give them time. I love the idea. If they don't fuck it up, we'll see where they go next week. We'll see where they go on Rampage of Punk with Hobbs. I like the idea of Punk with Ricky Starks a whole lot. I don't know if we'll ever see Hook work a match. <laughs> a, whatever Hook is, I get a kick out of him because he's just this weird, undefined character. And by the way, there's another one of those Cody things that was just dropped. Remember, he was Cody's student. Taz got him back, and that was it. That, he was just with Taz, and there was never a reference made to that ever again. But I really like this. I'm glad they didn't rush it and go right to an angle, even though this is an angle, but go right to you know a beatdown or go right to a match because that's an AEW problem. They go from zero to 60 in a second. But I thought this was great. And I am left waiting to see where they're going to go with it. And that's the feeling you want a wrestling fan to have when they watch a show. Where are they going to go with Punk and Taz or Team Taz? I love this segment. I loved it. I'll jump in and disagree with one thing. I don't want to see Punk and Hobbs. Not for a while. Because think about it. Hobbs... Hobbs has a little ways to go before he needs the match with Punk. Starks is ready right now. Starks can work, and it can be the same situation with Darby, where they can have a heck of a match, and Punk can win, and everybody looks better. Hobbs needs to be more physically dominant with his opponents now than he could be, should be, or would need to be with Punk at this point. It, it, I would say that that match should be kept for down the road when Hobbs has, that's a top of the ladder match and Hobbs is still working on the bottom rungs. It's not his fault. He just needs to be allowed to climb some of those before he gets that match. You know what I'm saying? And be ready for it. You know what? I don't think you're wrong. I guess maybe just selfishly, I was trying to think of a way to get him <laughs> away from Brian Cage. Maybe well, that's <laughs> oh yeah, he needs to see Cage again. They don't need to show fucking Hobbs pictures of Cage on vacation. He never needs to be that close <laughs> to Cage, and he'll get over. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, then we go back to Tony Schiavone with Ruby Soho. And before she got too much of a chance to speak, imagine this, Britt Baker, Reba, and Jamie Hayter come in, and they started sniping at each other. And I, I was, I said, eh, it wasn't a, it wasn't a promo to set the world on fire right home about. I'll wait to see the match later on. So we'll talk about that later on. But uh, <sighs> not bad, <laughs> nothing terrible. And Britt Baker right now is so comfortable in front of that camera. Well, yeah, that's see, that's the thing is Britt Baker's a great promo, but when she starts interacting with other people, whether it's on her team or her opponents that are not necessarily that great of a promo, then things start getting a little stagey. Can I say one more thing? I yes. have always loved Britt with, I was about to say Reba, but Rebel. And I wondered why they would put another girl in that group that she didn't really need a diesel or anything. But I've actually liked Jamie Hayter with them so far. I have no problem with that. Did you see the match they have later on? I'm talking about as a unit. I wasn't talking okay. in ring. We'll talk about the match All later right. on. All right. 